And he had that process down to nine minutes from first contact. And then about eight years ago, around the time I was having my kids, so I've got a nine and 10 year old now, and it was around the time I was having my kids. And, you know, you'll know this, uh, your perspective changes entirely. And all of a sudden, all I could see were headlines of kids that have been systematically cyberbullied, groomed, sextorted from, coerced and pushed into suicide. And he would pretend to, he would contact girls on public pages like Instagram or TikTok or whatever, Snapchat. And he'd target girls that were... 10, 11, 12, looked like they had eating disorders. And he would uh, contact them on those public pages, pretend to be a girl of similar age, and then start the trust cycle. And then the, sending the first nude image is the tipping point in a grooming attempt, because then what he would do was use that image, which is what most groomers do, to blackmail the child for more images, videos, online grooming, you know, taking part in online grooming. At that point, we can access all incoming and outgoing data, even in encrypted apps, but without the need to decrypt. This is the person your child was trying to send it to. So in practice, what that means is if we detect your child as being cyberbullied on WhatsApp, we block the message. We tell the child we block the message and we save it in a locked file on the child's phone and we send you an alert. So we're trying to create this process where parents and kids work together for online safety, but crucially where kids feel like their voice is heard. They've got some agency, they've got some independence. 